Hello and welcome to another episode from The Water's Edge where you join us today on a bit of a predator fishing adventure. Something I've not done for a little while but every time I get out and do it I really enjoy the day. So we're really lucky here in Norfolk, we've got quite a lot of water to attack and hopefully a few perch, a few pike is the order of the day. So we're at the first spot now, plenty of others to try throughout the day. I'm going to get the rest of the gear sorted and get fishing. So first spot of the day, we're just going to fish this little stave, this little arm of water off the main river. The main river's over to my right and basically if you've done much of this sort of fishing before you'll know that as it gets colder the bait fish push into little areas like this and then hopefully the predators follow them. So that's the plan today, it's going to be fishing a lot of dikes, staves, boat yards, places like that where hopefully these fish are going to push into. Now I can see already the water is pretty coloured so when I was setting up last night got the rods ready I rigged up this little creature bait and put a fairly sort of natural colour on but I think it's going to be a case today with this coloured water of perhaps changing the lures up quite regularly to try and find one something that works and then two once you've found a colour or a pattern you can really start sort of homing in on the fish and trying to select the bigger ones but yeah it's going to be fishing perhaps half an hour I'd say in each spot before we move on to the next one I've always found that you, when you get a bit of action it's quite quick so if I don't get nothing in five minutes here five minutes there keep hopping back to the car if not we'll move on to the next spot <laughs> the first bite. He's not going to break any records, but we had a little lure change up, and one has grabbed hold. We went with a little tiny salt and pepper spiky shad. One I've had in my box for absolutely ages, and like I said, he certainly isn't going to break any records. But at least we've had a bite, and like I said, at least we now know one particular lure works, and. This little spot holds some fish as well. He's not happy though with his fin up. Proper little aggression. You can see why they smash these loads. Well, we've saved a blank. We had a small perch in spot one. I don't think it's going to be easy today. The conditions are tough. But I can tell you one thing, we're back in the car now. The heating is going on max because it is freezing out there in that wind. I've nearly lost the use of my hands. But there's plenty of other spots to try. So we're going to get on and see what they're saying now. second spot now working the lures away and it's not a very big spot in all honesty we'll probably only be here 20 minutes half an hour but I've already started at the end of this sort of small hundred yard stretch at a road bridge I've worked the lures all the way along there just along this bank really sort of all the fishing is this close side and at the moment nothing here but it's just gonna give it another perhaps 10 or 15 minutes keep working these lures perhaps give another lure change See if anything comes along. Well, it 
has been a pretty tough morning and we now find ourselves in the middle of Roxham Centre which is pretty famous for some decent perch fishing. I knew conditions were going to be hard but perhaps not quite this hard. I expect a few more fish by now but stopped off for some lunch, all important sausage and chips to get us going for the rest of the afternoon and then we're going to get these in us and get back fishing. Nice little jay here, always holding fuchsia. Now they're always fairly small, to be fair. <laughs> oh no, this just about sums up today. It's not even a perch or a pike; it's a rod. <laughs> well, actually, quite a nice rod, and I have caught roach and bream before on jig heads. I've never caught a rod, so that's a first. You can see he's nailed that. Just a little three gram jigger was scaled right down and we're actually just trying to catch little wasps, little tiny perch because it's been so hard. But yeah, as I said, that really does sum it up, doesn't it? Catching a rud on a predator day. Well, I think if anything says to me that there are probably not many fish here is catching a rud on a jig. So I'll just quickly show you a few of the baits that with you today. So that one I literally slipped on the smallest little tiny jig I had because we're getting loads of little taps. But throughout the day we've used a, a selection. So little shads like that, this is a little perchy colour, some slightly bigger, played around with those. But most of the day I've tried to be catching on these creature baits and they're probably my favourite to be fair. In loads of different colours we've tried as well. And We've had a few little knocks but no hookups and it's just been a real frustrating day I think and to be fair I said at the start conditions aren't the best and I think it's proved it but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remount on another little yellow one I like this little colour just to give our next attempt it's going to be with that and I'm going to move to probably my favourite spot for perch fishing that's close to us and one where if we are going to catch a fish, I think that will be where we'd do it. So slightly earlier than I was expecting to move there, but the rest of the places seem pretty fished out as a lot of plastic gets sort of dragged through here. So they are quite used to it. We're going to head off there and see what happens. We'll just get this gear. Days like this where you definitely need your favourite spot to produce the goods. Well, unfortunately, the last spot of that day produced nothing as well. It's a bit of the same story. And sometimes it just isn't meant to be, I guess. But I don't feel like the day was wasted. I still enjoyed it. We still caught a couple of fish. But I did go home a little bit despondent. I wanted to catch a few more. And the angler inside of me just wouldn't give it up. So we are back out again today and actually I went home that evening and I contacted good friend Ben Smith who is a rage consultant and just speaking to him sort of spurred me on to not give up and come out and give it a go. He gave us a few different lure patterns that's been working for him recently and that's what I'm on today. A bit more of a natural coloured, still on the creature bait, a bit more natural colour and he said it's been going well for him. So yeah, a bit sort of regenerated and hopefully out for another morning's fishing, a few hours to try and see if we can catch a few more perch than we did on day one. Oh, that one. 
Well, I knew it'd be worth coming out for a second time. They always say fortune favours a brain. We didn't quit. We've been fishing like 10 or 15 minutes and we've had the first bite. So he's nearly ready. We'll get him in the net. And yeah, it's a better start than the other day anyway. There you go, you can see the creature bait in his mouth. But yeah, like I said, an awful lot better than what we had the other day. I really did get a bit, a bit despondent there when we tried everything, fish for so long. And it just, just proves that you've got to come out and keep trying. A different spot today, slightly changed the lure up, still a creature bait, but different colour. And certainly a better start to the morning. So we'll get this one slipped back. A few more casts in this spot before we head off somewhere else. But certainly looking a bit brighter. Hey, there we go. They're like buses, these. You only find a little spot of fish. The two come round together. This one looks a similar sort, so maybe a touch bigger, actually. Well, there we can go. You can see the creature bait still in his mouth there. He absolutely nailed that one. And yeah, like I said with the first one, after a pretty frustrating day the other day, it's nice to come out in the morning and catch a couple of fish. The sun is now burning off this mist so I think we've caught it absolutely perfectly and the fishing may get a little bit harder from here on in but to be honest with you I've sort of wanted to come out and catch a couple of fish and I've done it so I feel an awful lot better but we'll get this one unhooked we'll get him slipped back and we'll see if there is any more about. Well, it was certainly nice to have a couple of better fish and I feel a bit of reward for our efforts we put in the other day. It goes to show that, you know, what they are willing to feed, they certainly are catchable. But we just moved to a new little spot and to be honest with you, the sun has really burnt off that mist and it's not looking great for another fish. But we were only ever coming out for a couple of hours fishing. so making the most of it fishing early mornings late evenings is often a good idea but what i will just quickly talk you through is the retrieve that we've been using for these particular creature baits that i've fished today so one that i would probably say if you are new into it or you've not done it before is keep it nice and simple but definitely change it up and see if you can find something like quicker sometimes like it's slower but all i've done pretty much today there's sort of a twitch and a draw, you let it sink, feel it hit the bottom, pause for about 10, 5, 10 seconds and then repeat that process. And a lot of times you find you get the hit just on the pause. So it's quite important to mix that up, see if there's any difference and then if you get those wax, hit them on those pause. But we're going to fish away for the next 15 minutes perhaps, see if there's anything here. If not, we'll move on. I think the perch fishing probably is done now. It's really bright, a lovely day to be out here, but probably not the best of perch fishing. So all I'm now doing is just quickly attaching on a little Salmo Hornet, one of my favorite little lures. And to be honest with you, the reason I'm putting this on is because we've got about half a mile back to the car, probably a little bit of river to walk. So rather than just walking straight back there, I'll clip this on because a chance of a little jack pike or if a perch is there it would still grab this as well so just in case I slipped on a wire trace to make sure any pike is all nice and safe but I'm not convinced it's going to work but it's something to do on the way back to the car so we'll see what happens. Whoa. <laughs> 
Oh, that was right under my feet. A tiny, tiny little pike. I thought it was a perch. He is absolutely tiny. I can even swing him in. Look how big he is. That is probably the smallest pike I've ever caught. But that was on the first winding, literally underneath my rod. I was then about to lift the lure out of the water and I, <laughs> I said we might get a jack pike on the way but I didn't quite mean that small. What a cool little fella though. <laughs> we'll get him unhooked and I'll pop him back. Definitely the smallest pike I've ever caught. Well, we have fished all the way up this stretch now and we're at the last spot. The sun is well and truly beaten down. Everyone has come out to enjoy it. You can tell the weather's warming up. It's really busy now. So it's gonna be our cue to head off home, but it's a great way of fishing. It's really traveling light, visiting a few different spots and it's really nice to catch those slightly bigger perch earlier and then to finish on that little micro pike was a new pb for the smallest reason not for the biggest but all enjoyable all the same so if you like your bread at fishing give the video a like as always don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you again on the next one